It's now 10.37 in the morning on April 26, 2019. Okay, the flash images to start out with as far as dreams go. And then um, I had a dream at the end that I could remember. First image was the name Grace linked with Newman. I feel like this name Grace has come back, come to me in another dream. I don't remember if it's something that I read out loud or not, but um, that is my grandmother's middle name, my mother's mother. It's also um, uh, the name of um, Chris's, the middle name of Chris's sister. So that might be why it says linked with Newman. There might be other graces in um, Chris's family. Uh, and there is a Mud Honey song called In and Out of Grace as well from 1988 on their album Super Fuzz Big Muff. Then I get, you know, the song Retro Vertigo comes back to me again, specifically the line, I'm finding, now I'm finding truth is a ruin. Then, an image of a bunch of birds flying out of bushes and shrubs all at once, like sped up on natural speed. This is something that happens every once in a while in these um, sort of vision things. Like, it's almost as if um, you've taken something and digitally sped it up a couple, you know, a couple times, like, you know, maybe three, four, or five times as fast or even faster. It's kind of um, an interesting effect. Then I get an image of white drone trails and a big black cloud. And so it's white drone trails kind of coming down like this or going out like this. And then the big, so I tried to draw it. And then the next morning when I drew it, especially considering the dreams that I had later in the night, it looks to me like the crotch of a naked woman upside down. That's what the drawing looks like. That's not what I identified it as because these were white and this was dark. But still, that's what it end, ends up looking like. And I have a feeling that that might have been deliberate. Uh, then I get an image of the checkerboard flag. Uh, checkerboard flag, I think, is used in car racing. Um, and then there's that video um, called Side Ho, where they kind of feature that kind of thing, where the woman has the checkerboard flag and starts a car race that way. Um, and right now, when I read it, you know, I think about images, that image from a movie, which was Rebel Without a Cause, uh, which is interesting because... Um, the, the concept of rebellious, being rebellious, comes on later in the night as well. But this is sort of like the start of a car race kind of idea. Um, and also I've been thinking about my uncle lately, who ran Champion Auto Parts as well. So I think what's maybe going on right now is um, people are scrambling to get in, you know, on this stuff um, real fast, you know, before it comes to an end or to try to pre prevent it from coming to an end. I mean, it's the game. The checkerboard represents the game. Uh, and then another thing is that Chris is, you know, the Newman um, coat of arms, you know, the real one, as far as I can tell from the um, family line that Chris's father, you know, and father's father and father's father is from. Um, is actually a checkerboard, a black and white checkerboard shield. Um, so, I mean, I think all of those things are linked. Okay, then I get an image of Mickey Mouse standing, something blowing at him, like at his crotch from the left. Um, okay, so I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> uh, then I see a pentagram. And by the way, you see a lot of you know, star, basically, five-pointed star. You see a lot of those in the old Mickey Mouse um, animations. 
And um, the old Mickey Mouse animations have a lot of hints about the architecture of this game as it, w as it looked in the 1920s and 30s when my grandmother was a small child. Okay, then I get just a shape kind of image, and it looks kind of like this. So it's kind of like a human figure, but it's also kind of like a, um, you know, another type of a pentagram because there's five points to it. It looks to me a little bit like, since we had Mickey Mouse a bit earlier, it looks to me a bit, little bit like the hand of Mickey Mouse and kind of brings out the fact, you know, if you look at it that way, I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be, but it's probably supposed to be something that I'm interpreting. <laughs> Why does Mickey Mouse only have four fingers? And then I ask myself, which finger is it that Mickey Mouse is missing? I think it's his middle finger. <laughs> Although you can't really tell they're all the same, but um, it's just, you know, something to think about. Why does Mickey Mouse have four fingers on each hand? It's not an accident. Nothing, you know, Disney, especially those early animations that, you know, were probably, I don't know, were they like 14 frames a second or something? I mean, every frame really matters. Um... I feel like I started to talk about the early Mickey Mouse animations and went off on a tangent about our families. Um, but I was going to say that he, he uses a lot of stars in his early animations. He uses that a lot, the black stars. This is an interesting one because I do not remember at all writing it. And what it says is image of, and I do not know what this word is. <laughs> no idea what that word is. It looks, every time I look at it, I think it's garden, but it kind of seems like it's, I don't know. It doesn't really look like garden because there's no tail on the G. I would think at least I would get some sort of tail on the G, so I don't know what it is. Um, it could be area or something. And I write, it is a trap in Canada my family is involved. And then it looks like I've written a number here. It looks like I've written, at first I was thinking it's five, 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 but now I think it's probably five, three, five, because um, it's either one of those, but I think it might be five, three, five, to look at it a little more closely, just because that second number looks like it's more like a three. Oh, um, so, okay, as far as this one goes, my, um, I think it was my great-great-grandfather, I'm trying to, you know, I've been trying to figure this out on Ancestry.com, maybe I'll just look at that really briefly. Okay, so this is my great-grandfather, William James Cooper. Um... <laughs> Spilling from Minneapolis. So there's mistakes in this tree, by the way. Um, um, but I'm, I'm trying to get the gist of, of um, this whole thing with Canada and whether it's, you know, I don't know that it's necessarily related to this exactly, but I think it is. Um, so that is my great grandfather. Then his father, assuming that this is all correct, was. James Cooper, born in St. Vincent, Ontario, Canada, 50, 60, 70, so died pretty young also in Canada. So this is the ancestor that I heard drowned. And so when it says there was a trap in Canada, um, I think he may have been a trapper. Like, I think that might have been his profession. And so, um, you know, the story was that, you know, he had been out doing his work and, you know, something happened, his boat capsized and he drowned. I suspect, based on patterns in my family, that something else was happening and it was just, you know, yet another assassination disguised as an accident. And I imagine it would have been pretty easy in 1876 in the middle of Ontario to pull something off like that. Um, that is what ended up, um, so then what happened was, assuming that this is all correct, was it Catherine Hill the one? Now I'm getting confused.
James Cooper was married to okay, Carolyn Frances Mills. So Carolyn Mills then remarried and had more children. So she had two children with my great-great-grandfather. Then she remarried. I think the person's name was um, Murdoch. And when she remarried, she was permitted to keep the daughter in the family, but my great-grandfather was sent to a Catholic or orphanage, and this was a Protestant Irish family. And so what I was told is that he was badly abused in the orphanage and he ran away, and then he, he ran off and he st stayed with firefighters in Minneapolis, and they kind of raised him in the firehouse. Meanwhile, you know, the targeted family line was through his sister, because this is a female line. But the sister died in childbirth and was pretty obviously, from my perspective, assassinated in childbirth in a very gruesome manner um, that involved what I was told, her baby being cut up inside her and her bleeding to death. And, you know, the last thing he heard her say, his sister Rose, was, they killed my baby and they killed me too. So although the female targeted line here, um, Carolyn Mills, had remarried and had more children, including more daughters. What looks to me like, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious by this point, is that rather than continuing to go through the female line, they kept, um, they kept it in this line. Um, and I suspect that the reason they did that is because this was actually looked at as being a type of a gift, perhaps. You know, because in the end, I think that it, the idea was that, you know, um, the family was going to be reunited and, and, and that the people who were being targeted in this way would be rewarded. Um, I think that was the promise. So it actually, you know, um, maybe seemed like they were perhaps, you know, doing a doing some kind of justice by actually jumping over to the male for a minute rather than continuing through the female because the suspicion I think was, this is what I think just based on the story as I understand it, was that this was a plot that, you know, his sister Rose had been killed in a plot to um, hijack this situation and put it through this other family. Um, so I think that's what was going on there. And so... Um, you know, I've been trying to figure out when did the family emigrate from Ireland? So this guy, it looks like um, the first William Cooper here died, was born and died in Ireland, born in 1790 and died in 1832. So it was my great, great grandfather who emigrated from Ireland. And it looks like, yeah, it's not, it hasn't been so, yes, yeah, so Canada and then Canada, if this is correct. Okay. Um, so my great-great-great-grandfather, according to this, is this correct? So 1819, 1888? Yeah, it could be. Okay, so it looks like... Let's see, so this is great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather. This is great-great-great-grandfather. Born in Down, Northern Ireland. I always knew that Down referred to us, but I thought it was meant because it was upside down, like the hanged man. Now I see that, you know, a lot of these things are actually place names or family names that get turned into slang. Um, so, I don't know when he emigrated. I, I was trying to figure out if the stories that I had heard about um, them emigrating on behalf of the potato famine were true. So it was between 1845 and 1849. That's a pretty limited amount of time. And so he was born in 1848 in Ontario. So yeah, it's totally possible that that's correct. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, so as far as the trap goes, I think what that dream was telling me is that um, it was reminding me that 
my my great great grandfather was a trapper, but also that he may have been lured into a trap. So, and then just to be clear, this is the actual, so that's my great-great-grandfather, I mean, my great-grandfather, William James Cooper. Um, and then that's my grandmother, Shirley Grace Cooper. And then this is the targeted family line. Um, so it was, you know, um, my great grandfather's mother, Carolyn Frances Mills. And um, then her mother was Frances Massey. So there's that cherry again. I didn't realize that was also part of the fact, you know, this, this, this more and more I'm seeing that a lot of these words that come up in songs and lyrics um, actually come out of place names and family names. Okay, and four. Then I have the idea of being on the floor looking up at someone. Then I see the computer screen, like a pixelated grid, and the phrase, my art imitates crime, again from Retro Vertigo. Um, I think that the squares and the grids and all of this stuff is a representation of the, um, you know, the number four, the square, the cornerstone, the checkerboard, all of that stuff. But I have a feeling that the reason why this showed up in my dream, it might relate to a specific video I made where I put my camera real close to the screen to the point where you could see the grid. It's probably a hint about some video that I've already made. Maybe. Um, 532, I just have an image of the staircase, and 533, drones. The staircase is how you get up and down, you know, and then the drones, the planes that fly around and um, I've been, um, filmed a lot of interesting aircraft yesterday. <laughs> Maybe part of the reason why there's a grid here is because it's a reference to the grid, like the electrical grid. That might be part of it. <laughs> 